Today we're going to teach the students about algorithms. We're going to do this in two activities. One, providing an introductory look at what an algorithm is and what the goals of an algorithm are. And the second one will be with them implementing their own algorithms to solve a common computer science problem. For this first activity, we're going to teach the students about two different sorting algorithms. The first one is bubble sort, a very simple algorithm that uh, while easy to implement, is not necessarily the most efficient. And the second algorithm is merge sort, which is a little bit better and a little bit more complex. So for our first algorithm, what we're going to do is ask the students to line up in a single file line randomly. So if these represent our students and their heights, we'll line them up shoulder to shoulder, like so. Now, you will ask the students to sort themselves by height by only interacting and switching with the students directly to their left or to the right. So, in this case, this student is taller than this student. So, this one is in the correct position. Here, this student is shorter than this student, so they would switch. Once again, this one is shorter than this one, so they would switch, and so on, until they are properly sorted. Luckily, in this particular setup, the students were very close to being in their optimal positions at the beginning. You'll explain to the students that this particular sorting algorithm is called bubble sort. Now, for merge sort, you will ask the students once again to line up, but this time to line up in two groups of even number. So we'll have one group here, in this case, seven students, and a second group here, again, with seven. We'll then tell the students follow the same directions as in our first sorting algorithm, to sort themselves by height, but only by interacting with the student directly to their left or right. So to save time, I'm just going to sort them myself very quickly uh, without following those rules. Now you will tell the students to merge the two groups by pairing the smallest student in your first group with the smallest student your second group, the second smallest student in your first group, with the second smallest student in your second group, and so on. So we will take smallest and smallest, put them together, next ones, put them together, and so on, lining them up like so. Then they will once again follow the rules of sorting by interacting with the students directly to their left and right. So these two would switch. These two would switch. These would switch. And so on. Merge sort is a much faster way of obtaining a fully sorted group than bubble sort. And you can explain to the students that gaining this efficiency, gaining a faster algorithm to complete your task, is the goal of all algorithms in computer science, or most algorithms in computer science. For our second activity, we're going to have the students perform a simplified version of the classic traveling salesman problem. The traveling salesman problem consists of trying to find the most efficient route to connect a series of points and get back to the original starting point. In this case, we're going to ask the students to start at point A and travel through each of the other four points, B, C, D, and E, to finally return to point A. They can go through the points in any order they wish and take whatever path they want in the goal that they will achieve the most efficient possible route. Their considerations include the different types of terrain that they have to go over. 
For instance, a stoplight consists of using one gallon of gas. Stoplights are denoted by a red square, as can be seen here or here. Additionally, snow uses up three gallons of gas. It is denoted by a white square, as can be seen here, here, or here. Road, which is the gray squares, takes up no fuel at all, nor do the cities or the bridges, which are denoted in orange. Bridges allow you to travel over green, which is forest, which in other cases would be impassable, or other routes. If you're taking a bridge, you can only depart the bridge by going forward in the direction of the bridge itself. For example, if I were to start at point A, travel over the snow on this square here, and then take this bridge, I would pass over this path here horizontally, pass over this path as well, and end up on this snow square. I could not go to this gray square here because I would be traveling backwards from the point of departure. So, we need to figure out how exactly one gets around this map in the most efficient route. To do this, students should calculate the individual costs for each of the paths available. For example, to get from point A to point B, you would have to go past this red stoplight, past this red stoplight, and then on to path B, or point B. <laughs> Since stoplights have a cost of one gallon each, the total cost for this route is two gallons. You will continue in this manner, going through each of the individual routes between points. So, from point B to point D, you only have to cross through one red stoplight, so the cost is one gallon. To get from B to C, you must go through these two snowy points, indicating a six gallon cost. <clears throat> Students should be allotted a time of 15 minutes or more in order to find the most efficient route, or at least give a good attempt. Just so that you know as the instructor and are able to provide help and at the end of the activity, the answer, the most efficient route goes from point A to point B, then to point E through this route, then to D, then to C, then to A. The total cost of this route is nine gallons. Obviously, you could also take this route in reverse, going from A to C to D to E to B and then back to A, and it will have the same cost of nine gallons. If students are unable to find the most optimal route in their first attempts, you can allow them to have a second attempt based on why some routes were better than others. Explain what methods that students may use in order to find the most optimal route. For instance, it isn't necessarily beneficial to always continue to the next shortest path directly after the point you're on. For example, if I'm at point E, it isn't all uh, necessarily beneficial for me to go to point D over point B, since point D is only one cost, whereas point B is two. You should always be looking towards the most optimal route in the long run, cumulatively. After completing this activity, you can offer a wrap-up, as included in the instructions, and explain how algorithms tie into computer science in general, as well as the cybersecurity challenge. Thank you.